a very good afternoon respected professor pritish acharya my colleagues and dear students it is indeed an honor to introduce to you all professor pritish acharya sir sir you said that i should talk a little about our college yeah i uh, am yeah. uh, gujarat research society's hansraj jivandas college of education uh, we are like uh, established in the year 1969 it's a gujarati linguistic uh, minority institution and we offer bed course uh, of course we are a center for ignu and uh, uh, ma education idol university of mumbai also sir sir we have been re accredited with a a plus grade in the third cycle of nat and we have been granted the autonomous status and we were a part of the uh, 25 colleges uh, where the digital launch of entrepreneurship cell various projects of rusa have taken place so we were a part of that also we offer bed course Uh, so in our uh, our FY admissions have not taken place, but in our SY, uh, we have fifty students. You must be aware, since you are also from the uh, teacher education uh, institution, that we have fifty. We have one unit, and of course, for today's program, our alumni also is joining us, sir. And so today's program we are conducting under uh, Ek Bharat Shreshth Bharat program, sir. Okay, sir. Um, uh, let me further introduce sir sir is presently professor of history at department of education in social science and humanities at regional institute of education bhubaneswar a constituent unit of ncert sir is a holder of ma mphil and phd degrees in history from jawaharlal nehru university delhi sir has taught history at rajiv gandhi central university itanagar sir has also rendered his service as a reader and associate professor at ncert delhi and as a professor and head department of history at national defense academy pune after being selected at upsc delhi sir has a number of publications in the form of books papers in journals to his credit sir has also written many short stories too sir has contributed to state level and ncert history textbooks sir is a member of various textbooks and other academic committees to mention a few the national focus group in social science teaching national curriculum framework 2005 and indian history congress sir on behalf of management of gujarat research societies hansra jivandas college of education our principal dr anita swani madam staff and students i extend the warm welcome to you sir on this online platform and request you to share your valuable reflections of national struggle in odisha students i request you that in case you have any questions for sir please please put up on the chat okay Archana Madam and Shreema Madam will take up those questions and will uh, post those questions to Sir a little later. Is that fine, students? And please keep your mics muted, please. Okay, Sir. Uh, request you to yeah. begin with the session. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam and students. Even if you are not before me. In a regular class, I consider you to be my students, and I feel happy that on this 15th August you are all assembled here to say, listen to me about a part of the nationalist struggle that had happened in Odisha. The topic is uh, uh, reflections of nationalist struggle in Odisha. As you know. Uh, in 1757, after the Battle of Plassey, uh, India was gradually brought under the British occupation, and starting from Bengal to different parts of India, the British rule started, and it continued till 1947. The whole thing 
need to be seen as one struggle, great struggle, which had different phases. And also, say, we need to see it as a, uh, a struggle which had spread to the different parts of the Indian subcontinent, I would say. Today, the India that we had then, uh, in 1757, the India that the British, so the Mughals had left and the British had inherited, had been, uh, say, a far larger and bigger India than that we have today. And the nationalist struggle in different phases had spread to different parts of this Indian subcontinent. Uh, uh, now, coming to Odisha, say I mentioned that 1757, the Battle of Plassey took place, and soon after that, the East India Company, which until then had been a say, trading company, for the first time became a uh, administrative unit with a, a, a kind of administration, became an administrator. And both did not give up trading, but trading and this administration continued simultaneously under the control of the East India Company. East India Company also had uh, army, also had navy, continued to say conquer the different parts of India. And this conquest, which we say the spread of colonialism, British colonialism, they, had created resentment among the people. And the resentment could be expressed, could be reflected in the form of the say, nationalist struggle. The whole nationalist struggle could be seen in two broad phases. The early revolts, say you can say a kind of proto-nationalist struggle in which the rebels, the people who participated in the revolt, uh, did not have much idea about the uh, uh, issue of colonialism. They had underestimated and thought that a foreign power, a power different from there had come and occupied and they resisted. Say it's uh, culminated in the revolt of 1857 since 1761. I mentioned 1757 is the year when the, the British occupied parts of India and since then the British occupation, British, British conquest con continued. And since 1761, in the form of Sanyasi rebellion, it continued say for, a, for nearly 100 years and culminated in the revolt of 1857 which we mentioned as the Sepoy Mutiny. Sepoy Mutiny is not our name, or Sepoy Revolt is not our name. The, the British had said they, to underestimate uh, the uh, significance of the revolt. It had, of course, the uh, 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 Sepoys uh, as main participant. Also, there were say, thousands of common people, and to say that the common people were not there, this mentioned it as Sipo uh, mutiny or the uh, uh, Sipo uh, revolt. Uh, the present understanding among the historians is that it should be uh, seen as the revolt of 1857. Now I would come to Odisha that when 1750, uh, 1757 was the year when the British occupied Bengal that say to Odisha they came in 1803, 1803 that uh, Odisha was occupied. Odisha at that point of time was not a single province. It had uh, been under the control of different um, of, uh, say administration. For example, the Nizam of Hyderabad had occupied uh, that was before the coming of the British, that the Nizam of Hyderabad had occupied South Odisha. 
and that South Odisha continued to remain uh, with Madras presidency even after the coming of the British till 1936. Then there was this uh, Odisha division, uh, which you understand as the coastal Odisha, Kotak, Puri, Paleswar. Uh, this part had been part of the Bengal uh, presidency. And then there was this Western Odisha, the Odisha which touches Chhattisgarh, like uh, Sambalpur, Kenpalangi, uh, Kalahandi, uh, this part, Western Odisha, had been uh, part of the uh, central provinces, CP, uh, which had its headquarters at Nagpur. So, Odisha could be seen in three parts. And in the beginning, since 1803, after the occupation of the British, that we see a revolts and uh, rebellions occurring in different parts of Odisha, Odia speaking tracts. The first one was in 1804 by a rebel called Jai Rajguru, and the place where he revolted was Kurdha. Kurdha is very close to Bhuvaneswar, the present capital. And uh, today, Bhuvaneswar is a part of Kurdha district. So it's a uh, 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 it's at Kurdha that Jai Rajguru had revolted in 1804 and he was caught uh, very soon after that he was put in jail and finally in 1806 he was executed at Medinipur jail by the British. Then uh, uh, nearly 13 years after that in 1817 I mentioned 1804 Jairaj Guru and then after that, 1817, there was another report at Kurdha. And this was by uh, Boxi Jagabandhu. Uh, probably you might have heard uh, the name of BJB College in Bhuvneswar. That is a very prestigious college. And it is named after this Boxi Jagabandhu. Boxi Jagabandhu Vidyadhar College, BJB College in Bhuvneswar. And same place. Kurda. And uh, say, though Boxi Jagabandhu was a, a general of the traditional uh, king of Kurda, there had been the movement, the revolt which he had started, uh, had been getting the support of the general people. And why this support for this revolt? Because soon after the coming of the British, a lot of new problems had begun. I'll mention one. That for example, Odisha has long coastline, and Odisha also had this manufacturing of local salt. Salt. After the coming of the British, they tried to take the revenue from salt, and also they tried to bring their salt they started their industry as a result of people, the large number of people who were engaged in the manufacturing of salt, in the transportation of salt, in the preparation of salt, and the say, uh, uh, Mahajans who had invested in the salt, native salt industry, they all were jobless. They became unemployed. Uh, similarly, the taxes, the revenue that had been imposed by the British. Earlier, the, the kings had been uh, collecting revenue, no doubt, from the peasants. But now, say what happened? The rules were very stringent. They were not lenient. Earlier, suppose, say, one rupee each fixed for the entire state, then at best 50 paisa or 60 paisa would be collected, and rest would remain and people would not be able to pay because there has been drought or flood or there has been some other calamities or maybe some local problems. They would approach the Jamindar. Jamindar would also uh, understand the problem and there would be remission of revenue. They would not be charged to 
pay or they would not be harassed to pay. Now the British became very stringent that once it is fixed and once it is supposed to be paid by the peasant, it has to be paid. Say whether the peasant has a good uh, harvest or not, that is immaterial, he has to pay. And this had created resentment because as you know, they, neither in your Gujarat or say in Odisha or anywhere, the peasants are they're not a very rich say community. They, they put hard labor and only then they get, uh, they get little. And that depends on the mercy of the rain and many other natural conditions. As a result, they were forced to pay, so they resented. Similarly, there were the Paikos. What is Paiko? Paiko is a Padatiko. Padatiko means the, uh, uh, the soldiers, was the foot soldiers, the foot soldiers in country. They, had been fighting for the, they had been part of the uh, traditional army. Now, after the coming of the British, and they were simultaneously peasants as well as soldiers, because war had not been happening, battle had not been happening every time or every day. So there were peace time, there were say battle time. During the battle time, they would be joining the army. When during the peace time, they would, they were, all cultivators and peasants. Now these say, traditional soldiers, pikers, they were disbanded. And Boxi Jagamandu, the name I mentioned in the beginning, he was the general of these pikers in Khorda. So they were all disbanded. They had lost their job. They did not, they earlier, the, what was the job that I mentioned? And then they also had been granted rent-free land that they did not have to pay because they also had been serving as soldiers. Now they were, uh, uh, say, um, imposed tax. And because of all these things, the people had been rejecting the British rule. The Britishers were not alone, say, uh, a stranger to look at, not only new to look at, they had brought new rules which was not tolerable, which was not justifiable. And the people had been rejecting. So, so the nationalist struggle, I would say, not nationalist, I can say, I would say rather pre-nationalist struggle or the early revolts in Odisha had begun since 1804. 1803 was the year when the British occupied Odisha. And 18, since 1804, everywhere, Kurdha, I mentioned one, then Samalpur was another place, then Banki, the Onugul, so everywhere. So you will see that these local princes and zamindars, they had say, initiated the revolt, they had taken the lead of the uh, people and they had revolted against the British. And it continued till say, 1857 and even beyond 1857. Uh, in 1857, so when the revolt of 1857 occurred, which we generally know as the Sepoy mutiny. Uh, and in the beginning, I mentioned why Sepoy mutiny war is not acceptable. So at that time, say, there was a say, very major revolt in Odisha. Say, and the leader was Surendra Sai. Earlier, I have mentioned Jai Rajguru. Then also, I mentioned uh, that Boxi Jagabandhu. Now, now, I'm mentioning another name, Surendra Sai. Surendra Sai, who was he? He was a claimant to the throne of Sambalpur in Western Odisha. He was a claimant to the throne of Sambalpur. And say, uh, against this occupation, British occupation, he said, the British said, say, I may be given the throne. And he believed that say, the British had almost say, uh, yeah, made the local king, local prince say, useless. He is a puppet in the hands of the British. So if I become a uh, become the king of Samalpur, I would assert. With this objective, he assert uh, say rebel. And uh, in 1840, 1840, he had begun the revolt since 1827. And in 1840, he had been put in jail. 1840. 
and the, he was in Hazaribagh jail. Presently, Hazaribagh is in Jharkhand. He was in Hazaribagh jail, and in 1857, when the revolt of 1857 broke and broke out, and the sepoys there, <clears throat> they opened the gate of the jail, Hazaribagh jail, because they had been rebelling against the British. So this person, Surendra Sai. Came out of the jail. Already he had been there in the jail for 17 years. They now he got an opportunity. Instead of compromising with the British, they had been offering him to compromise. Instead of offering or accepting the British offer to compromise, he rebelled against, and that continued till 1864. What I mentioned, 1857 he came out of from the jail. Then. Uh, 57 to 64. So during the revolt of 1857, he had been say, organizing the revolt in Western Odisha. In 1864, again he was say arrested, put in jail, and till 1884, 1884 he remained in the jail in Nagpur, and there in the jail itself he died. So all total, this man. Surendra Sai had been there in the jail for more than 37 years, 1840 to 57, and then 64 to 84. 84. Say so 37 years he had remained in jail. Some of his colleagues, one was such Hortesing, Hortesing, H A T C. He was a jamindar at a place called Hens. He had been sent to Anaman to the cellular jail. Cellular jail had not been uh, uh, created at that time, but some panels say punishment. He had been sent to Anaman, and some other colleagues had been executed, uh, uh, hanged mercilessly. This was the punishment, and despite that, the revolt had continued for a long time. Who so did not have any formal relationship with the rebels of 1800? So I am talking about the early rebels, and in that context, I mentioned about Surendra Sai. Also, I mentioned that he did not have any formal relation with the leaders of the revolt in Jhansi or in Delhi or in Kanpur or in Boreli, but independently. Uh, Surendra Sai, with his the friends and supporters, had been fighting against the British in Western Odisha. This had been a the major event uh, in and around 1857 in Odisha. So Odisha, if from one angle, if you see, it was not part of the revolt of 1857. From another angle, when you see that it was very much. A part of the revolt of 1857, and the people uh, here, uh, at least in the western part of Odisha, had been say participating. Not only participating, they had uh, been punished for participating, uh, actively participating in the revolt of 1857. As I mentioned, Surendra Sai uh, had been in jail. Uh, um, um, for uh, one uh, for 17 years in the Hazari Bagh jail, and then uh, more than 20 years in the Nagpur jail. Finally, in the jail itself, he died. Many other colleagues also died. Uh, when we come to the uh, uh, nationalist struggle uh, in the late 19th century, then say. What I had been mentioning about was the uh, was the early revolt, early revolt which continued from 1804 to 1860s, and in the 1860s, in the late 19th century, we see the emergence of the nationalist struggle in Odisha, and that uh, also had great significance uh, uh, because of several reasons. Uh, one that say it had been spreading to different parts of India, and that was a great because uh, the nationalist struggle. If 
it happen only in Delhi or only in Mumbai or only in Calcutta, it would not be the yielding any results. And the uh, uh, people, the British against whom the movement had been uh, uh, launched, would not take much care, would not give much uh, response unless it spread to the different parts of the country. In uh, late 19th century, uh, one event uh, that uh, had uh, ignited the nationalist spirit in Odisha was the uh, famine of 1865-66. This was called Nongka Durbikya. Durbikya is the word in Odia for famine. And this 1865-66, this was immediately after the revolt of 1857, that not less than 10 lakh people died of starvation in Odisha. Uh, by then, a very small uh, uh, group of educated uh, people, newly educated people had come up. And now they saw that if the government had taken care, if the government had little uh, feeling for these people, sympathy for these people, ordinary people, then this thing would not have happened. So many people like, say, um, yeah, uh, like animals would not have died in Odisha. So what was the need in Odisha? Say, the, they were ignored, they were neglected, they were not cared for, they were allowed to kill, die in the famine of 1865-66 because they were uneducated, because they were illiterate. So the limited number of people who had education, we mentioned them as new intelligentsia or nationalist intelligentsia, and now they, they put pressure on the government for opening new schools so that more people are educated. They opened schools themselves and took care so that Odisha become educated and Odisha's people. It's a question of the identity. That identity of Odisha would be say lost. Odisha would be humiliated unless it has education, unless it has the, all these modern developments in Odisha. And the uh, uh, people, the intellectuals now became a pressure group. This had been happening in other parts of the country. The newspaper was brought out. It was a weekly a newspaper called say, Utkal Dipika in 1866. That was the first say, weekly in Odia. Uh, then uh, weekly run by the intellectuals of Odisha. Then a year later, that Samad Bahika, another weekly was brought out from Baleswar. The first one is in, was in Kotak. Then similarly, in different parts of Odisha, such efforts, such developments took place. That not only newspapers were brought out, in 1882, Three years before the coming of the uh, Indian National Congress, uh, one Utkal Sabha had been formed in Kotak. Utkal Sabha had been formed in Kotak. Then around the same time that there was a national society in Odia, it is Utkal Sabha. In English, it could be translated as the National Society. This national society came out in Baleswar, in Gwanjam, another part of Odisha. Though it was not part of this, uh, um, say, Bengal presidency, that was part of the Madras presidency, there also such efforts, say, were made. And the intellectuals, the educated people, they had their gatherings, they had their annual meetings, they had their uh, 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 discussions and debates. And what was the issue? How to bring a development, how to change the fate of Odisha, how say we can come out of this ignorance, illiteracy, and this, all this, not directly say they were speaking against the British because it was a very, uh, say, early phase. They did not have the uh, courage. They also got scared that 
say if we speak against the British, we will be arrested and we cannot afford to do that. Uh, very mildly, very moderately, as it had been happening in the uh, national level. So in Odisha also, in 60s, 70s and 80s, that this intellectuals movement, intellectuals gathering, intellectuals get together, that had been happening. The person who had been taking lead of these uh, intellectual movements in Odisha was Madhusudan Das. Madhusudan Das. He, he was a lawyer. He was the first graduate from Odisha. And uh, uh, he was born in 1848, much before Mahatma Gandhi. He would be a contemporary of Hirosa, Mehta, Gopal Krishna, Gukhle, and all these early nationalists. So he had studied from Calcutta. He returned to Odisha in 1881. He was very extremely sorry that Odisha was lagging behind. Odisha was not uh, as much as, not as much, uh, not, not active as much as uh, Bengal or other uh, regions. So he took lead here, formed the Utkal Sabha. All these intellectual movements, all these say cultural and um, uh, uh, say intellectual movements, he was the say, called figure, he was the leading figure. So say, if you one wants to know about the uh, nationalist struggle in Odisha, say one has to know, one has to understand the uh, role played by Madhusudan Das. He was the first graduate, he was the first postgraduate from Odisha, he was also the first law graduate from Odisha. Say, he had married a Bengali lady in Calcutta. 15 years he had studied in Calcutta. He could have settled there uh, because he uh, was well versed in Bengali. And instead of settling in Calcutta, he returned to Odisha, organized the people, and say, initiated the nationalist struggle in Odisha. What was the issue in Odisha then? Issue during the period was say, that. Amalgamation, amalgamation of the Odia speaking tracts. It was not against, uh, it was not for liberation of India or it was not for, say, any other uh, big issue uh, or anti colonial issues. But what the people felt that Odisha has been lagging behind, education in Odisha had been lagging behind, the culture of Odisha was almost on the verge of identity. The language of Odisha was not getting its view or not its place because Odisha had been divided into different parts. What are the parts? One that I mentioned in the beginning that the southern part was under the Madras presidency. That say, in Odisha you can see the Ganja and Borampur. You know, the students also might have heard this name, Ganja and Borampur. They were parts of Koraput also, Jaipur, Koraput, they were part of, uh, if you look at the map of Odisha, then you find the southern part had been with the uh, Madras presidency, then the, uh, the uh, western part, western part that is Sambalpur and the areas adjacent to Sambalpur, they were part of the central provinces, city, which headquarter was in uh, Nagpur and <clears throat> the Odisha division, which comprised Kotak, Puri, Baleswar, and the adjoining regions, that was part of the Bengal division of the sorry, Odisha division was part of the Bengal presidency. So, so because Odias as a community were not united, they were put in different. Uh, provinces and say um, presidencies, they felt that their unity was a must. Otherwise, they would be neglected, they would be ignored, they would be humiliated all the times. The major problem they had been facing because of this disunity that say Odia language was say in great trouble. Say this was a time Odia, as you know, today is a classical language and it has a long history. It has a long history, but in the 19th century, there were, uh, say, uh, say uh, 
movements in uh, Odisha by the uh, say people from Bengal, which who said that Odia was not an independent language. It was a variant. It was a uh, say uh, you can say dialect of Bengal. Against this, the movement in Odisha had begun. It was a movement for amalgamation of the Odia speaking tribes. It was a movement for the uh, identity for the cultural and the linguistic identity of Odisha, Odia people. Unless the people were brought together, unless the people remained in under one administration, they would be, uh, say, minorities everywhere and their uh, neglect would continue. So they fought for amalgamation. That what does, what does it mean? That all these three parts should be brought under one political administration. In 19, and then they started also getting the result. In 1905, in 1905, that the western part of Odisha, that was Sambalpur, say it was taken from uh, the central provinces and united with the Odisha division of the Bengal presidency. Then the movement in, in 1912, 1912, I mentioned 1905, and then in 1912, that the uh, uh, Bihar and Odisha uh, state was created, a separate state was created in 1912. 1905, the Western Odisha was brought. 1912, the separate Bihar and Odisha province was created. And at that point of time, the intellectuals in Odisha, they had been demanding for a separate state. And finally, on the basis of its language, its culture, a separate state. And finally, in 1936, the say, separate state was created. <clears throat> what was the relation of this movement for a separate state and the nationalist struggle? The nationalist struggle which say, the Indian National Congress had initiated since 1885 and the forerunners of Indian National Congress before 1885 that they had this Odisha intellectuals, Odisha leaders had their group where they had been fighting for a uh, separate linguistic state and uh, they had been fighting for the culture of Odisha. But on the other hand, they had been not hostile to the Congress. That so they've said that our priority is this Odia issue. Our priority priority is this Odia movement. Priority is this separate state. But that does not mean that they would be hostile or they were against the say, National Congress which had been fighting for the liberation of the country or independence of the country. They say in uh, the uh, beginning of the 20th century when the Swadeshi movement began in Bengal Odisha is very close to Bengal and in Odisha also some kind of Swadeshi movement. Already the Swadeshi movement had begun because the, uh, um, uh, the leaders in Odisha had been stressing that unless we are uh, self-dependent, unless we have our own products, unless we uh, stop depending on others, on, on, on Britain for different things, we will not be say independent and say say they had been uh, uh, they had started this kind of Swadeshi movement independently and when the Swadeshi movement began in Bengal they say joined not in a very intense manner but some say uh, 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 reflections could be seen in Odisha as well when the Swadeshi movement was started meetings were held and also a boycott uh, meeting was held in, in which the foreign clothes were they boycotted or born in Odisha. In 1903, earlier I had mentioned about the uh, beginning of the first newspaper in Odisha that was 1866, Utkal Dipika, which had been like any nationalist uh, newspaper taking up the issue of Odisha, general issue of Odisha, welfare of Odisha and 
uh, it was trying to bring out the uh, problems which Odisha people had been facing before the government. Also, it was trying to bring what the government has been thinking, what the government had been doing for uh, the people in vernacular language. So that was brought out in the uh, weekly paper. Now in 1903, 1903, there was a say, association called Utkal Union Conference. Utkal Union Conference. In Odia, we translate it as Utkal Sambilan. Utkal Sambilan. Say, you can see it as a kind of, uh, say, uh, Odia version, Odisha version of the Indian National Congress. Annual, there will be an annual meeting, resolution should be passed, then there would be a president, there will be many uh, say long discussions how to develop the uh, 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 state of people, how to develop the state, how to bring um, the people to the forefront of the nation, because the understanding was the, their feeling was that Odisha had been lagging behind other states. So unless special care is given, unless some care is given, then Odisha would continue to lag behind. And that will be not a good thing for a nation. If we look at the uh, development of the nation or we see the nation as such, as a whole, then we find that every part of the nation must develop. Every community must develop. Every region must develop. If one region is lagging behind, it will be like a say the nation would be like a uh, vehicle with a broken leg or with a punctured leg. So with that notion, the uh, nationalists in Odisha, uh, they had been pursuing their issues, their cases in the Utkal Sambilani or Utkal Union Conference. They were not very keen to become a part of the Indian National Congress, which had been formed in 1880. There was a small group, say, within the Utkal Union Conference, which had been demanding for the integration of the conference, Utkal Union Conference, or Utkal Sambilani, with the Indian National Congress. Why demanding this unity? They were saying that unless we integrate this Odisha say, group with the national group, then we will not be able to put enough pressure on the British. The British say would continue to ignore us if we remain separate from the Indian National Congress. On the one hand, the leaders of the Utkal Union Conference had been attending the say uh, annual sessions of the Indian National Congress in Bombay and other parts of India, wherever it had been happened. Madhusudan Das, for example, had attended the Indian National Congress 17 times in 1912. He was also say, a very say, executive member uh, of the uh, say, reception committee uh, uh, of the Indian National Congress. But at the same time, they tried to maintain the separate identity of the Utkal Sambilani because they believed that, that unless this issue of Odisha is not taken up specially, or with extra care, probably the 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 nation, the Odisha, or the uh, the the problems of Odisha, or the problems of the people of Odisha would be say, ignored. They will not take care. The leader who had been pressurizing for integration of the Utkal Union Conference with the National Congress was Gopobandhu Das. Earlier. In the early revolt case, I had mentioned Joy Rajguru, Boxi Jagabandhu, then uh, Surendra Sai. There were many other names, three names I mentioned as important. Then during the uh, uh, Utkal Union or the movement for a, a identity for a separate state for the amalgamation of Odia speaking states, I mentioned Madhusudan Das. And now I'm mentioning another name that is Gopabandhu Das. Who was Gopabandhu Das? A man who was part of the Utkal Union Conference, but had also been pressurizing with his friends and colleagues and supporters that the Utkal Samilani must integrate with 
the most become a part of the indian national congress finally in 1920 1903 it had been formed and for 17 years it maintained its separateness and in 1920 the utkal sambilani or utkal union conference merged with the indian national congress uh, uh, when Uh, the Gandhian phase had begun in Indian National Congress when the non-cooperation movement had been launched. So Odisha became a part, an integral part of the nationalist struggle. Odisha became active in the non-cooperation movement, and Mahatma Gandhi had come to Odisha in 1921. After that, for Eight times he had come to different parts of Odisha, mostly Kotak, mostly Puri, Ganja. These were the also he had gone to some old ones. He had met uh, Madhusudan Das, for whom he had great regards. Mahatma Gandhi considered Odisha to be a say very active in the nationalist struggle. Non-cooperation movement was launched in Odisha. Odisha the uh, had its the branch of indian national congress in 1920 19 uh, 1885 the national congress had been formed and till till 1920 odisha did not have its branch the utkal union conference had been functioning as the main organization main social and political organization in 1920 the utkal union conference merged with the indian national congress and since then odisha Remain active in the Indian nationalist struggle. It had been active in other forms. Now it became uh, active uh, uh, in the non-cooperation movement. Then again in 1930, the civil disobedience movement, and very very active in during the Quit India movement in 1942. So these three movements, say so we see as the three phases of a single movement that was the gandhian movement in india and gandhian movement also had its reflections in various parts of india including odisha gandhian movement got odisha integrated with the indian national congress and odisha say was fortunate enough to intensely participate in the non cooperation movement civil disobedience movement and the quit india movement uh, uh, of course uh, we could continue but i would request madam if there are uh, yes, sir. questions then uh. Uh, sir uh, uh, you also have with us our other uh, uh, teachers teacher educators also uh, sir Very so good. we i request um, we have professor uh, uh, manjeet sambe uh, archana katgeri madam uh shrima banerjee madam they all are part of the ebsb team also sir and even sure, pallavi sure. pallavi uh, dr pallavi tarekar madam also is there and um, uh, she is the history method master uh, uh, shrima dr shrima banerjee and dr archana katgeri madam uh, do you have any questions from students uh, no no vaishali ma'am i could not see any question but i just wanted to I had a question actually. Mm -hmm. sure, Can sure. I ask? Sure, sure. Okay, sir. It was it was very nice to know about the Odisha's contribution to the freedom struggle, and especially to know more about Madhusudan Das because we have heard about him, but so much about his contributions we were not aware of it. Sir, I just want to know that uh, since he has contributed so much towards the upgradation or rather national freedom struggle of Odisha. Till now, is there something which is being kept in memory of Madhusudan Das? If we visit Orissa, do we see something, sir? Monuments or sure, uh, sure, sure, sure. Epics see, or something, sir? Say, <clears throat> sure. First of all, if you visit Orissa, then Kotak is the place where he was born. Not born. He okay. had been uh, living. He had been born in a place called. Sir, I had visited. Sir, I had visited, but since I could not see, therefore I just this was a query. Thank you so much, sir. Please agree. Okay. Okay. And uh, then also I would suggest, and also the students should be suggested to go through 
uh, some books on Madhusudan Das. One book, Selected Writings of Madhusudan Das, I have brought out for the national book. And then it's in English, that Selected Writings of Madhusudan Das. And uh, we have put, uh, I have uh, selected some writings and you'll see on uh, national movement, on secularism, because he was a Christian. He was a Christian. And uh, during his stay in Calcutta, he had been converted to Christianity. At, but at the same time, he was also the person who fought against the British when the British tried to take control over the Puri temple, that Jagannath temple. At that point of time, his Odia identity, they proved to be heavier than his Christian identity. As okay. a Christian also, say, okay. say as a Christian, he would have opposed the idol worship and all. But he said, it's not a question of idol worship in Jagannath or Puri. Say, it's a question of identity. Identity and this identity uh, which Odisha has in the name of Jagannath or the Puri temple must not be uh, appropriated, must not be killed, must not be taken uh, away by the British. And for that, he had been the lawyer because he was a very successful lawyer. He had been, say, uh, as a lawyer, uh, he had been fighting this case and also he had been uh, earning a lot of money, which he had been pumping to the nationalist struggle in Odisha, the Odia uh, linguistic and cultural identity movement. In so this book I would suggest the selected Thank writings you. of Madhusudan Das, which uh, National Book Trust had brought out, and this is a book which I have edited. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Over to you, Vaishali, ma'am. Yes. Any any questions, students? Any other, uh, 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 Pallavi madam, Dr. Pallavi, Dr. Archana, any questions? Okay. Uh, no, Vishali ma'am. Okay, fine. No, uh, ma'am. You are very clear. Thank you very much, sir, for the information. Yes. I, uh, sir, I now request uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Manjit Sambe, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you. Manjit, madam. Thank you, Vaishali. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you very much for this wonderful talk on reflections of the nationalist uh, struggle of Odisha. On behalf of Jirat Research Society's Hansraj Jivandas College of Education, our principal, Dr. Anita Swami, madam, and the entire HJCE team, I, Dr. Manjeet Sembi, take this opportunity to express my deep gratitude for being here with us today on this uh, uh, this occasion of the 74th Independence Day. What a wonderful day, what a wonderful day it was for us to be celebrating the Independence Day. We earlier had a virtual thing where we celebrated uh, at the college level our Independence Day. And sir, now had your erudite talk on the uh, struggle, the national struggle of Odisha to our contribution, to the contribution of the independence struggle. In your reflections, sir, you very beautifully uh, enlightened us about the uh, contribution of Odisha in the Sepoy movement, as the British called it, uh, contribution of the rebels like Jay Rajguru, Bakshi, Jagan, Bandhu, Dityadhar, and Surendra Sahai. And imagine being in jail for a cause uh, as dear as uh, freedom for your uh, uh, country or your province, being in uh, jail for 37 years. Then you also spoke about the contribution of Madhu Sudan Das in the amalgamation of the different parts of Odisha into one province and an assertion for its cultural and linguistic diversity. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't. I'm so sorry. I spoke about uh, uh, Mr. Das's contribution to in integrating the Utkal Sammelini with the Indian National Congress and which brought Odisha into the mainstream of the national struggle and helped it to contribute to the non-cooperation movement, civil disobedience and quit in Germany. 
uh, thank you so much sir for being with us without any powerpoint presentation just through your uh, uh, narration and storytelling you kept us uh, engaged and uh, helped us learn so much about the history of odisha i once again thank you sir for being with us taking out time from your schedule and enlightening us uh, over the nationalist movement of odisha and helping us see in the wider frame of our thank you so much sir thank you for thank you thank you madam uh, i am really very uh, happy to see so many students and the teachers and they are presently hearing me it's a topic which i love to talk and because of the technological uh, problems probably for few minutes we could not be connected yes and, that was just a few and, minutes uh, yeah yeah uh, just a few minutes and secondly uh, what i spoke was only a small part so we could have elaborated uh, the other uh, part for example the non cooperation my phd is on the non cooperation movement and national uh, nationalist of, uh, movement and politics in odisha 1920 2029 sage the publisher has brought out my book uh, also i could have uh, elaborated on the civil disobedience movement and the quit india movement then there was a very strong uh, princely states movement in odisha so what we find madam that say this india this india is a conglomeration of all these regions all these people all these different uh, cultures and all say what had been happening in delhi or what had been happening in the metropolitan town of calcutta or mumbai say that is great but at the same time people say in all parts of say the country had been responding to it in their own way it was not a imitation of what had been happening in bombay or calcutta or delhi but in their own way for example say if this odia identity issue had not been taken up probably the congress and mahatma gandhi would not have known that this is such a sensitive issue the british were of course a problem the british rule had to be fought but at the same time if the language linguistic say diversity or the linguistic identity issue had not been seen then probably we would have been the trap as pakistan was trapped after the formation in 1947 and the consequence they had in the form of the bangladesh or the the uh, disintegration of pakistan in two countries in 1971 because they imposed urdu on the rest of pakistan that had not happened in india because the leaders in odisha india had understood and how they understood because of this say this taking of this issue at the regional and the local level if the issue had not been taken up by the leaders like modusudan das mahatma gandhi probably would not have understood that are this is such a sincere and serious issue they are indians but if you say that your language is a dialect of some other language or your language no more exists or your language has to be say appropriated by other languages then that would have been a very say bitter experience for india as well as odisha if we become inclusive in our approach whether it is a question of language or it's a question of religion or region if we become inclusive try to accommodate all everybody then the country becomes a very beautiful place the nationalist struggle becomes a beautiful place and the post independence india would also become a very beautiful place provided we become inclusive we try to understand others issue thank you all i am so grateful to all of you for providing me an opportunity to speak maybe some other occasions again say when the situation improves then we will be able to uh, say uh, face each other and also i would be say speaking to your students i am so grateful to all of you thank you thank you sir thank you for your wonderful insights thank you, thank you the ebsb team for organizing this talk and the students for participating thank you sir with this i end the meeting